Hello, and welcome to Three Questions with our my buddy Mike in with us. Mike is a mortgage officer. Mike, good morning, and welcome to the show. Hey, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Mike, I should come on the show today because I got to admit, I'm super confused about this market. It's almost comical. You know, I'll be scrolling social media. Hey, you know, you really should take action now. Experts say rates are climbing. Then the next post, hey, hold off. Experts say rates are going to go down. How do I know who's right? And even home prices see that. Oh, they're clearly going to keep rising. No, no, there's going to be a huge correction. Mike, I don't want to be the person that buys an $800,000 house and two months from now it's worth six. What do I do? So that's pretty much the calls I've been getting left and right. And I tell people, I don't have this crystal ball. If I did, I'd buy the lottery <laughs> tickets for tonight and win the lottery and retire on the beach. But what I do tell people is Fannie and Freddie do have positions on bonds. That's how the it's how they're able to lend their money out. Rates do have to come down. We have a couple different aspects at play here. We have one is we have affordability. Everything's becoming less and less affordable. We have historical housing prices with you know rising rates, which is causing people to dig deeper in their pockets just to pay their mortgage. So you're seeing that aspect. You, we also do have an election coming up and it's not saying Democrats or Republicans, but normally, and historically, when it comes to elections, they need to kind of win over the American people. And with affordability issues, something has to be done. So Fannie and Freddie do um, anticipate rates to come down to four and a half percent in the next 18 months, regardless if that is two months from now or 18 months from now, who knows? But the most important thing that I've been telling people is I'm getting these calls left and right. So if I'm getting these calls left and right. And then I have people that are saying, hey, Mike, rates are too high. I can't afford this. I am going to be sitting on the sidelines. I'm going to wait to see what happens. And they're, they're just doing the wait and see. Well, when we're talking rates are in the sixes and sevens, now all of a sudden they drop down to, let's say, even the fives. And people are like, okay, I'm ready to go. We're going to create another market like we just had where we're still going to have a lot of buyers. There's going to be limited sellers. And you're going to start seeing bidding wars again. So I tell people, get ahead of it. There's a lot more certainty. You can only control what you're doing, what the market's doing now. You don't, you can't control the future. So that, that's my advice to those people. It's really interesting because it feels like economics one-on-one is not working this time. Because usually as rates climb, home prices naturally have to come down because if not, then you get the affordability issue. But because of the limited inventory, that didn't happen this time? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the other part is supply and demand is there's still not enough supply for the demand out there. You're going to see corrections in some markets. Don't get me wrong. You're already seeing it. Ones that were heavily bought by investors with Airbnbs, things like that. But right now what we're seeing is the steady residential home, home and, um, markets. Those are the ones that are thriving still. You're going to see price reductions, but that doesn't mean that the house is worth less than it was listed for. It means it was probably improperly listed. That's what we're seeing. I have people still in bidding wars. I was one of nine offers on a house. It also depends on the price point you're buying it. And that's a very key factor because of that affordability. When you're talking about houses from that $600,000 to $800,000 price point, they're sitting on the market a little bit longer. You get under 450 and they're, you know, everyone's looking for those, those uh, priced houses for the affordability factor. So, Mike, I came across two people recently who were coming to the end of their lease on their rental property. And they're like, oh, my God, you know, I really want to buy something, but it feels like timing might not be right. That's kind of an individual decision, though, right? Whether you want to jump in and sign on for another year. Yeah. So what I, what I tell people is it all depends on your lifestyle. Not everyone wants to be a homeowner and, and that's okay. You know, everyone's like, oh, homeowner, generational wealth, all this stuff, you know, the TikToks, the Facebook reels, all of it. I tell people, guys, that might not be for you. It just might not be. Do you want to deal with plumbing issues? Do you want to deal with electrical issues? Do you want to deal with all these things? Or do you want to make a phone call and have someone else pay for it? Granted, you pay for that luxury. With the rental markets right now, especially with the rates going up, housing's going up, you're seeing rents rise rapidly. On top of, because of that, what we're seeing is a lot of people that are trying to time this market and they're trying to sell their house and they're mm -hmm. sitting on a ton of cash and they don't care what they pay for rent because they're like, this is short term. I'm out of here in 12 months anyways. So they're increasing the rate market at uh, the rent market as well yep. too. So I'm telling people, if it fits your lifestyle, it's not a terrible time. 
you have the means to do it and you want to become a homeowner, still become it. Don't just be like, oh, I'm done renting. I want to become a homeowner or the market's too hot. I'm going to keep renting because you, 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 you're not weighing all your, your pros and cons of the benefits. So Mike, what's the best way for people to reach out to you? How can they learn more? You can always reach out to me by uh, phone, text, email. Um, my number is 978-501-5442. Uh, I pretty much have that thing on me at all times. So text <laughs> message is the best way to get a hold of me because uh, if I'm doing some, a video or if I'm talking to people, I'll, I'll just get back to you as soon as possible and give you a call. Mike, I appreciate you taking a couple of minutes to call into the show. And as always, thanks for being my friend. Thanks so much.